Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. for joining us for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of Oregon. Her name is Naya Grace. Naya, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thank you for joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. Um, Now, I mentioned you're from Oregon. I also Mm -hmm. uh, understand that you're just 18. Yeah. Um, We're going to get into your music uh, a little bit later, um, which I love, by the way. Thank you. Um, but before we get started, tell us a little bit about Naya and uh, I guess Oregon. Yeah, so I was, or I'm born and raised from Oregon. Um, I started singing when I was like six, and then I started playing piano when I was like 11 and writing songs when I was like 11, and then playing guitar when I was like 14 and stuff. Um, yeah, I, my family are farmers. We have like a, a grassy and hazelnut farm of 5,000 acres. Uh, that's pretty much it, I think, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, now, when you say Oregon, you don't really think about Music. artists coming out of Oregon. Yeah. How did that process all work? Um, like, how did I get discovered and stuff? How did you get discovered, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I went to a songwriting camp when I was 14 called Young Musicians and Artists. And basically, you know, you can go for like different things. And I went for the songwriting, obviously. Um, And uh, the songwriting teacher came up to me on the last day and was like, hey, I really like this song. Can I send it to a friend who has a recording studio and just see what he thinks about it, see if he could like send it out to people. And I was like, of course, totally. And then that friend sent the song to my now manager, John. And then John actually flew out from LA and came and met with me and was like, I love your stuff. I want to sign you to my independent label. And then from there, it all just kind of happened, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. And now how long ago was this? I was 14, so that was four years ago. Four years yeah. ago, wow, <laughs> just 18. <laughs> does it seem like uh, all this happened really quickly for you or does it seem like it's, I, I guess, normal, I guess, maybe? But how does that- It isn't normal at all. <laughs> To me, it doesn't. I mean, I feel like I've, I've obviously had like a, a different childhood to a lot of, or a different like teenage years to a lot of people, because you know I, I did online school for high school, and then all of this was happening, and I was kind of like I started going to the UK for music when I was 15, so I was kind of back and forth a bit. Um, it definitely feels not very fast because I feel like I've done a lot of growing and a lot of learning, and obviously you're so much different at 18 than you are at 14. So I feel like it was a bit of a process. So I feel like yes and no almost of how fast it went, yeah. Okay. And we were talking offline, you have a your album coming out, I think you said in June? Yes, yeah. Um, what's the title of that album? It is Honey Colored. So Honey okay. Dash Colored, yeah. Okay, and um, curious, uh, where did that title come from? So I, that is the first title of the album. Um, and I was in the process of picking out an album title. I was so stressed about it. And I had people telling me like, oh, you could just do your name. And I didn't want to do that. And I didn't want to do the title track for the album because I feel like that puts a lot of pressure on that certain song to be like the best on the album almost. So I was stressed about that. 
And then finally, I just kind of decided to do it because I just thought it sounded elegant and I just love that song with all my heart and I love that lyric, especially in the song. And I feel like, I feel like I'm honey colored, like my skin tone, and I feel like it represents so many different things and it just sounds like whimsical and soulful. And I feel like it just embodies everything that the album's about almost, so yeah. So eventually I decided on that. Okay, and is the, your uh, team sent me some information is um, sooner or later, is that the first release from the album? That is actually the second. Oh, what was the, the first release? Uh, Sunday. Sunday was the very first release and I released that on Valentine's Day, I believe. Oh, okay. And then just last Friday, I released sooner or later and I just wish you call me as like a double single release or like mini EP kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're going to play a snippet of both of those um, sooner or later, and I wish you to call me uh, a little bit later. Um, so being 18, um, who were some of your influences um, that you kind of looked up to? I feel like growing up, I I was really into like Etta James and Billie Holiday. Not totally, but a little bit. I was trying to get into that. Like I went to a jazz camp when I was... 12 or 13 for vocals and stuff and I really just wanted to I've always been like a little bit into jazz but I haven't fully dived deep into that side but I was into kind of like Nora Jones or Corinne Bailey Ray and but I was still at the same time I say that but at the same time I was also into like Selena Gomez when I was nine and like I grew up around kid pop music and I loved it to death but I feel like what influenced my songwriting and my singing i started listening to leanne le Havis, who i love and that was around when i was 14 is when i discovered her and that's i feel like listening to her kind of changed how i thought about songwriting i think and especially because around that same time i was learning to play guitar and she plays the guitar beautifully and so yeah so i feel like there were certain people that kind of took me more towards like a soul quieter neo soul kind of route if that makes sense yeah okay um now was your family into music or are you the only one who went that direction? Um, I feel like my whole family's into music. It's hard because like if everyone's into music, no one is really like, no one in my immediate f family really listens to, I don't know, it a bunch, but I don't really listen to music a bunch. I don't know how to explain it. Like my mom loved 80s music and would show me that growing up. And my dad loved like old school hip hop and I'd listen to that growing up. Um, and my sister goes to like a lot of music festivals and stuff. And I actually have an aunt who was a background singer in Chic, and she was kind of like my main music influence as far as like where I think I inherited my musical ability, I feel like. But yeah, I think that was it, yeah. Okay. Um, now, the album, I think you said earlier um, when we were talking offline that you, you recorded it in London or mm -hmm. England? Yeah, yeah. So I recorded all of it in the UK and half of it. I did it with two different producers, Steve Chrysanthou and Michael Graves. And so half of it, I was doing it in South London and then the other half with Michael Graves. And then the other half, I was in North England in a small town called Hebden Bridge with Steve Chrysanthou and recording songs in his house there. And so I would literally like spend a week with Steve and then and write songs there and ha obviously have a place to stay and then spend a week in in London and then you know write songs in, in London and stuff and record there and stuff so yeah so it was kind of like back and forth but it was all in the UK okay now um, you know being uh, being so young in the business um, the producers that you work with were they um, were they kind of hands off or they let you did you well did you write uh, the album or did you um, have writers who wrote um, the songs for you, or is it on your own, your own right, your own songs? I mean, yeah. So I either wrote the songs myself. I think there were like two songs on the album that I wrote entirely myself and brought to the producers, or and then the rest were like co-writes. So there was a couple that like I started and then I brought to them and we finished. And then a lot of them were just like us in a room together and starting from scratch. And like, they would either come up with a chord progression or I would, and then, you know, I'd do some lyrics. And it was kind of just like a natural thing. And then eventually the song kind of came about. So yeah, so they were very, it was very much a collaboration, I think. And they were very, 
I think I give them so much credit because, you know, I met them when I was super, super young and they've been very patient with me trying to find my sound, I think, because I think as obviously as a teenager, I haven't been totally certain of anything, let alone like what I want my defining sound as an artist to be. And so they were just really, really patient with me trying to find and trying to help me find my sound for the album and really just find myself in a lot of ways. And so, yeah, so they were just, they were great. I love them. So. Okay, great. And um, like sooner or later when I heard that, we, uh, I think we were talking earlier and you said um, Corinne Bailey Ray, that's who it kind of remind me of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you met her or have you... Um, do you admire her, some of her work, or do you, are you a fan of hers? So crazy story, I've always been a fan of hers. I've, I literally remember being like 10 in my room and doing a karaoke version of Put Your Records On and just like, blast. I think every 10 year old girl did that, but I've always loved her. And somehow I was able to do a writing session with her because my wow. producer, Steve Chrysanthou, did her first and second album and is like a close friend of her and so I was able to do two writing sessions with her and one song that we co-wrote together is actually on the album which is really really crazy oh, wow yeah it was really really crazy yeah I don't even know how that happened honestly like I think back in it it doesn't even feel real but I was actually like in the same room as her and we got to write together it's crazy oh okay now when you first met her did it was it a little intimidating for you since oh, she's totally. established yeah, 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 totally. The second time I was totally fine, but I was telling my producer Steve about this. Like the first time that we met, I was so nervous. And I just felt like I didn't live up to my potential, like my songwriting potential, because there was so much pressure on it. Like we were starting out a song together for the very first time. And I was just like, I was so nervous. and I felt like I didn't do well enough. He's like, oh no, you did great. But it was so intimidating. And she's lovely. She's the loveliest person ever. She's just so sweet and so just like gentle and calm and just like so put together. But I was just like, oh, I got to impress her. I got to do something. I got to show her that I'm a good songwriter, but it ended up being great. Okay. And I'm sorry, what's the, uh, what's the name of the honey, honey color? Honey colored. Yeah. Honey colored. Okay. And that's dropping in June, you said. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So right now uh, I would like to uh, pause mm -hmm. and uh, play a snippet of sooner or later. Cool. All right, so this is uh, Naya Grace, and sooner or later, enjoy. We'll continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Now, back to our conversation. All right, Naya, we're back. That's a great song, by the way. I hope people yeah. enjoy it. And I'm sorry, that's that's out now. Am I correct? Yeah, now everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Where can Where can people purchase your music? Um, iTunes, you can stream it on Apple Music, stream it on Spotify. Um, yeah, right okay. anywhere, not everywhere. Yeah. How long has it been? How long has it been out? It's been out since last Friday. Oh, so it just was released. Yeah, just was released. Wow. Last week. Okay. <laughs> um, I know it might be um, too soon, but what type of uh, response have you gotten thus far? I know it's just I less than a week, but. Yeah. I've gotten a pretty good response. I feel like when I did Sunday, it was almost scarier because obviously the first song I ever released was a song called Black Coffee and it was very acoustic jazz. It was very calm. And that's kind of how I started off, out like my style wise when I was 14 and such. Um, and since then I've kind of evolved and changed a bit and experimented more and found kind of like a more soul vibe and a more a bit more produced vibe than like the acoustic vibe that I was going for. And so for Sunday I was really nervous because I didn't know, like I knew people that I knew personally weren't expecting it and it was just kind of like a new sound that I knew people weren't really expecting so I was just kind of nervous but that went great and now I feel like it was sooner or later and I just wish you'd call me. It's kind of to be expected, so I feel like it's been good. And yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, the uh, with 
the Corona nineteen thing going on. Um, I know that's probably put a damper on yeah. getting involved and performing. Yeah. yeah. Um, are there other ways you want to um, support this project? Like, are you going to do maybe? I know IG. I go on IG Live is pretty hey. popular now and. I've done that once. I'm planning on doing more. I'm actually doing one on Saturday. Okay. Um, yeah, so just doing lives and yeah, I mean, sending my videos into any place that will post them or share them or, or anything and just doing lots of covers and just trying to stay active. And I mean, it's really all you can do. I'm doing a, um, a Facebook live stream for another company next Thursday. Yeah, I mean, it's all... It's really all you can do is just like live streams, posting and connecting with people and collaborating is really great. I've been collaborating a bunch and like actually songwriting on Zoom, which is really fun. Um, so yeah, just a bunch of that. Okay. Um, and also if you uh, send us links, we'll go ahead and post it on our website. Yeah. And, and also in the show notes on um, our YouTube channel. So that's kind of where you're going from there. Was there any, um, was there any thought or about maybe delaying the release because of corona um there was for a bit and yeah there was for a bit and i just i think me personally like before i talked to my manager and stuff i was a bit nervous to like continue releasing and just didn't really know what was gonna happen but i feel like it's almost the best time just because like everyone's available to consume music and stuff and to stream stuff and it is like yeah you can't i can't do a lot of things like that i was planning on doing this summer and stuff but um i think there is still a bit of a worry but you kind of just have to trust that you know people want to consume things and a lot of people are releasing things and yeah okay um yeah um so that's great so going forward i guess kind of really don't know until yeah Corona, um, you know, gets done doing this thing. Um, anything else you want to share with us? I think you have a fascinating story. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Um, I think I was telling you before when I was 17, 16, 17, 18, 14, mm. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And here yeah. you are, you know, focused and driven and putting out good music. So I commend you on that. Well, thank you. What kind of advice would you give um, uh, people or um would be singers who want to follow in your footsteps? Mm. Um, I think the most important is um, writing music as much as you possibly can and seeing if songwriting is maybe a path that you could take and yeah, as a way to put yourself out there because there are so many people that do this. And for me especially, I think my biggest issue as a songwriter is I'll start a bunch of things, but I will never finish them. And I think like, and also because I'm a perfectionist, it's just like, I criticize everything that I do. So I would say the most important thing is just to stop criticizing yourself and just realize that what you're doing is good and maybe show it to other people and just see how that's received and be able to take that criticism without it destroying you. Because I think as artists, we're very sensitive, me especially, I'm a very sensitive human being and I just like take everything to heart, but yeah it's important to remember just to be kind to yourself as an artist and but also grow at the same time yeah okay and um you said earlier that you went to a, a songwriting camp yeah, yeah, yeah when you started writing songs before you went to the camp yeah and when they presented i guess how to write a song in camp was it along the same lines of what you were doing or was it totally different than what you thought a songwriting a song a songwriter would do that's a good question. I feel like, I think that definitely changed me because it wasn't until after the camp that I started writing the songs that like, songs that are like on my album, like a, a couple months after the camp, I wrote a song that's literally on the album that I released, you know, four years later. So I think a lot of the tools that they gave me were helpful. I don't think that you can like teach someone how to write a song, but I do think that just kind of like building it like a muscle and learning how to collaborate. I think collaborating with people really, really was helpful for me. Just learning how other people work and other ideas kind of help feed your own, I think. And yeah, so I think it was different. I mean, songs I was writing when I was like 13, 12, I would never show anyone. <laughs> they were so, even the one that like, that 
got me to my manager that my manager saw. I listen to that now and I'm just like, I don't know what he was thinking signing me because I, this is not that good. It's kind of cheesy, but I somehow he liked it and I'm very grateful for that. How did you, um, how did you like your experience? How did you like your experience in, uh, in London? I fell in love with London like the second that I got there. I first went when I was 15 with my mom and I just, I absolutely loved it. I loved the tube. I just loved everything. I loved the music scene. It's great because I'm able to perform um, in a lot more places than I would be able to in the States because obviously I was young and stuff, but I was able to gig so much, which was amazing. And also I just feel like they're very, very attentive there when they watch music. Not that we're not attentive, but I just feel like I just loved the energy in a crowd when I was performing. Um, yeah, and obviously the music scene and everything, but yeah, I just loved it. Okay. Well, great. Um, well, Naya, uh, mm-hmm. I appreciate you taking the time today. Of course. Um, anything else you want to add before we uh, close out the show today? I don't think so, no. You can find my music anywhere. You can follow me. You can just see what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, and you're on all the, I'm assuming all the social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Okay. So that's where they can uh, reach out to you. All right. Well, congratulations on the, the upcoming album and also congrats on the the three releases that you, you put out so far. Um, so good luck with those. Like I said, we'll have links in the show notes and also on our um, our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'd like to thank Naya Grace for the time today uh, you. and you have a great day. Thank you, too. All right. Thank you. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Naya Grace. You can find out more about Naya on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. There we'll have links to all of Naya's social media sites and her music. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Todd Woodson. See you next week.